Hello and welcome to another episode of Sci Week V. My name is Hui, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about public speaking. There's a famous study in the 1960s, um, and you know they were looking at nonverbal communication and how important nonverbal gestures are. They found that 93% of communication regarding emotion is actually conveyed mm. not by the words you say, but by the expressions you have on your face and in your body. Yeah. Now that is a study that only looked at. The way communication is for emotion, so it's mm -hmm. not looking at content specifically. Yeah, but that does give us the significance of how of how important it is for us to know how to convey ourselves in a way that is can that that helps people perceive the information we're trying to communicate, and that's why this is such a great episode to to start with because. For me, I think it's a skill everybody needs to think about and can use. Yeah, public speaking can be a very, very intimidating thing, and you're right. Emotions definitely play an important role in public speaking because when you, how you feel affects your communication and behaviors. When you're not passionate about a particular subject, people know. People know you're just trying to get by. Um, so if you have If you have a chance to to do public speaking and you have a choice, choose choose something, choose a subject that that is that interests you, that you are passionate about, because the audience mm -hmm. will see that it will it will show itself through your nonverbals, and people will it helps people it it helps make a better impression uh, in people, and like we said. We mentioned in other episode we talk about memories that are that, that that go along with strong emotions are long lasting. So the same principle apply when you express your emotion, you create an, an impression in the audience, and it helps them to remember you better, longer. Yeah, exactly. So you want to associate your message and you mm -hmm. with. An emotion that is there, and one way to express that it's actually your level of knowledge and passion mm. for the content you're delivering. Yeah. Right? So knowledge and, and passion are two are two very important things. And so whenever you're given a choice to speak on something, mm -hmm. pick something that you're passionate about. Because the way I think of it is, why waste your time on talking about something you don't really feel it's that. Well, sometimes it's a group project, and you know it's it's <laughs> terrible, but you have to do it. Yeah, right. And in the real world, you don't have to have that kind mm -hmm. of sacrifice, yeah. right? You know, if you if you think of the profession that where people actually are exposed to public speaking the most, you think of pastors. They're up there preaching, essentially, as public speaking every week. Right, and so one thing that I think about is that's such a privileged position to be in, right? because for that particular profession, they're called to be able to do that. They're they're give they're delivering a message that is making a positive impact for people's lives, and so that passion sometimes comes naturally for that group of people. While that comes easy for some people to convey that passion, it may not be for everybody. And so the following are some tips that will help you sort of boost up your confidence and passion for the uh, content of the message you're delivering. Sounds good. Yeah. So the first thing I, I think about is I think about a power post. Power post? You mean like yeah, this? like uh -huh. yeah, like expanding your body, mm -hmm. right? Because if you If you remember, you know you might have seen these in like Hollywood movies, where a person, an employee, walks into a big boss office. The big yeah. bosses never sit like this. Oh yeah, they would lean back. <laughs> they take lean up space. back. They put their yeah. leg on their ta on the uh -huh. table, and then they kind of go, mm -hmm. "What do you need?" Right? Yeah. That I cannot do. And 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 part of that is exerting that power that you have. Mm. 
Now, it's different than thinking highly of yourself, right? A power pose helps you feel that confidence、mm. in that moment.、Mm. And so they've done these studies about power pose,、uh, where they give people the opportunity to go into a before a job interview or before meeting an important、mm-hmm. person. They have people do practice the power pose. So you know, like looking at themselves、mm-hmm. in the mirror like this, or going like、yeah. this, like. Mm-hmm. When you win,、yes. some, you know you、mm-hmm. automatically go yes, right? Exactly. And so, when people are given the instruction to do power pose, they come into the conversation much more confident than if they hadn't, and they actually get better results coming out of、mm. the conversation. Yeah. So one tip: if you、and、do so, job interview, as you wait for people to call you, sit. You know. T- Spread, spread out. out. Just you know, just don't do、yeah. it in in such a weird way. But you know, be confident in even in your sitting position. It helps you in your、right. interview. Yeah, and then the other thing is, if you think it's weird to kind of do it in a public place, there's always a, a restroom where you could actually、mm-hmm. practice these poses. So, so it's something to take advantage of. And、it's important because now your com- the message you're conveying is important. You're passionate about it, and your vis-、mm-hmm. physical body language conveys your comfort and confidence over the topic you are about to speak yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. So, and and that that for me is one of the biggest thing that you you can do to help yourself. So, what does it look like on stage when you do public speaking? Yeah. So you know, I'm a petite person. So if people know me in person, I'm, I'm rather small, right? And so one thing that I do is, it's sort of a funny story. I spoke at a conference、uh, some years ago when I had just started、um, in my profession. And usually, conference rooms in、uh, big hotels are really big, and you're speaking to hundreds and hundreds of people. And the podium is not made for people my size. They're made for people who are like six or six five or seven. That's foot, a big,、right? that's a big、so、podium. <laughs> that they're big podiums, and so if I'm standing behind a podium, it's probably up to here to me, and it's like th- three, t- two times the size of my width, right? And so what I'm, what I would look like is I would look like I'm a scared sixth grader, right, presenting my first speech. And so that's not what I want. So what I what I typically do is I figure out that if I don't、uh, leave myself needing to use the mic on the podium, and I learn how to project my voice so that people can hear me, or if I'm given the opportunity to have my own personal mic, I always ask for that in advance. And I'm always, you know, already suited with it. So that those are things that you can do to prepare. The other thing that you can do is if you're at a podium that you're un- disproportional to you, to your size, you can stand beside the podium. And if you have your mem, you have your what you want to present partly memorized. You don't need to rely on your computer screen behind the podium. You just need to be present to be able to click. Now it's nice because some places actually just have the clicker, and you should use that instead, right? And so, not being confined to the things you put on the podium gives you this natural way to speak what you have in mind, and then also be able to s- separate yourself from the items in the room that is disproportional to you, so that you're not looking like you're. You're a teeny person in a big space, right? So walking back and forth also does that.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is that the the principle is to take up space, and you can do that in many many ways. You can、uh, walking back and forth on, on stage. That that's one way that you take up space too, and it projects confidence. And mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And when you speak, ex- you can extend yourself. Right.、Um, this is one thing I do a lot. I use my hands as nonverbal g- gesture.、Mm-hmm. So you want to be able to extend your hand. Yeah. I mean, somebody talking like this、mm. versus somebody doing this、yeah. 
right? It gives the audience a completely different it, feeling it, it, and perception. It seems welcoming, yeah. And you seem right. trustworthy. Right. You show your hand. You should not like put your hands in your pocket or play with your keys. Yeah, like you're about to pull pull out a gun or something, right? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, because it makes you look anxious, and it makes you feel anxious as well. So when mm -hmm. you show your hand, extend your arms, shoulders back. Um, don't extend your back, but but just you know roll your shoulders back. You look more confident, and you feel more confident. It's like magic. Yeah, it it's right. That's right. How how you feel and what you do is related, and so um, it's funny you you mentioned sort of you know um, extending your back and kind of taking up space the same principle we're talking about but the other thing that you want to do is if you're if you're wanting variety you can also lean forward when you're talking about something that is really important right because it conveys that you are interested in that topic right? and so that's a way to change it up a little bit where you're not like you're not always leaning you know kind of going head and straight there's it's okay to do the variety of things whatever you're comfortable with. But there are some people who are really nervous about their body gesture to the extent where they kind of freeze up. And the idea is if you're speaking about something you're passionate in, it's okay to express it in a way that allows people to understand that. Right. So, so you've noticed, yeah, you noticed that I've, I've changed my tone, my pitch, and my pace a little bit to demonstrate my next point, which is create variety when you're speaking, both in your tone, in your pitch, and then also your pace. You can always speak really quickly when there are things that are coming up and you're making a point and it seems to be hitting people. So you want to keep eliciting that attention, right? You can always slow down and lower your tone and convey your message. If you really want people to think about something, you want to say, I'm going to give you a couple seconds to think about that. And so now you've gotten them to a point where they've slowed down their heartbeat and now they're in thinking and reflecting on what you're thinking uh, and on what you're talking about. Yeah, so your, t your tone and pace can set the feeling yeah. for the atmosphere if you right. know how to use it right. well. So, you know, because when you're changing your pace, which is one of those things that it's easier to change, you don't have to be a very well-versed public speaker to be able to do it. Right? It just takes a little bit of practice on the content you're trying to deliver. But when you're trying to convey excitement, a faster pace is actually helpful. When you're trying to convey a sad story or sad feeling, you want to slow down and be a little bit quieter, right? When you want to convey significance, leave time, right? Pulse, wait. Silence can be very powerful and it is, it is very common that we are afraid or we are not comfortable with silence but when we know how to use it well and master it silence can be powerful not just in public speaking but also in personal conversation because the tendency i have the tendency so i know to feel the void to feel the, the emptiness the silence with just sound that doesn't really help convey your idea but it's just sound when you leave the silence for people, like it helps, the silence helps you to collect your thought for the next point and also to help your audience think about it, digest what was presented. And that is something I'm still learning to do, in, especially in, in, in therapy, seeing clients having that, that moment of silence to be comfortable with it. And especially here, Sci Week V, learning to speak concisely and not just just fill the void with sound and one of the things that I, I find very interesting is to use stories and analogies metaphors 
and visual aid in your public speaking because it helps people relate to your story. It helps people relate to the point that you are trying to make. For me, because I spend a lot of time communicating with people through therapy, and so you, you notice that sometimes when you use analogies, people remember them better, right? And so sometimes I say things like, well, you know, um, learning skills and um, balancing life is sort of like riding on a bicycle. You can't just ride by pedaling, right? You have to actually see where you're steering. Um, uh, and so you want to be able to paddle at the pace that you can steer and pedal, depending on whether or not you're going uphill or downhill, you have to make an adjustment to how fast or how slow you pedal. And balancing life is a little bit like that part of you can't just work, 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 work. You gotta work when work is required, play when play is necessary, and enjoy your, the process of getting there instead of waiting to be there to be at the destination, right? So a lot of those kinds of analogies help people have that visual in mind and remember the message in a way that is that they can apply to what they already know. So so I think that that's right on. Um, you, you know that a lot of um, the research shows that, you know, right after you give a message or a speech, 50% of it is lost. Like right? 10 minutes, 10 minutes after your presentation, people only remember 50% of it. That's if they pay attention. And then the next day, they only retain 25%. And then a week later, they retain 10% of what you said. That's depressing. That, well, it's depressing, <laughs> but the good news is, if they're gonna remember 10%, you better uh, make sure that the 10% that they remember is the thing you think is the most important in your message. And so uh, Winston Churchill says, if you have a, an important point to make, right, uh, try to make it in a subtle, clever way. Try to do it, you know, hit the point once, come back to it, hit it again, come back to it a third time, and the third time, make it, give it a tremendous whack, right? And so, and, and that's excellent advice. You see people do it all the time. They state the same things in different, slightly different wording, add a story or something memorable to it, and that's gonna be the 10% that will be retained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the, the power of stories not to be underestimated because we may not be able to remember all of the content of a speech, but we remember the analogies, we remember the story, and, and, and we can still remember the gist of what that story is, is teaching, is, is trying to teach the audience. And that's, that's always a good, good, good um, strategy to include stories in your public speaking. And, um, when talking about anxiety, because public speaking, um, being anxious about public speaking is, is a kind of anxiety too. And when talking about anxiety, the most at the most basic level, anxiety is when you become so focused on you, on what other people think of you. Like, do I look stupid? Do do I sound? What do they see? Yeah, do I sound funny? And the, the antidote for that, and it works for most kind of anxiety, is you shift your focus from you to the other person or from... To the task. Yeah, to, to the task. Like from in, in, inwardly focused to outwardly focused. So it helps. Like for public speaking, a trick it could be you pick a person in the audience and you look at them and you speak as if you are speaking to them. Yeah. Now you you don't stare. You want to stare. <laughs> yeah, just I was just gonna say. <laughs> yeah. Pick different people. Right. You know, from time to time, change, change, right. uh, change your gaze. Yeah. Um, or so so it used yeah, to what, be. Yeah, you know, it used to be when when you're um when I went to school 
one of the trick is uh, your, your teachers would say, well, you know, imagine your audience are, you know, pigs or something funny or trees or whatever, right? And I just, and, and it's funny because I'm like, well, I don't want to be talking to trees or pigs, right? I want to be talking to people. And so, so the, the thing that I always remember is um, the trick with turning it outward is you want to pick, there are always going to be people in the audience who are following along and though you know how to pick up those people they're the people who are nodding and they're the people who are jotting down things or making eyes eye contact with you right and so usually the people who are going huh, are the people who you want to like motion yourself to covering the stage is helpful because you want to remind yourself that everybody is your audience and yes make eye contact with those people who are nodding and paying attention to you but then also do something so that the other people are engaged too so when you turn your attention outward you're paying attention to the non-verbal cues of your audience at, rather than paying attention to how you feel inside. Yeah, if if you become self-conscious, you will paralyze. And and this this principle apply in job interview or going out with a girl. Just like if you keep thinking about what people think about you, you will not be able to do anything. It's Instead, just too much to be thinking about. Yeah, fo focus on their questions, focus on them, making eye contact, interact with whatever they are giving you. And it, it helps. A lot like I, I can attest to that yeah so what you want to do is don't keep saying to yourself okay don't pay attention to yourself don't pay attention to yourself because gradually that's what you're doing it doesn't work like if you keep if you try to stop yourself from thinking too much about yourself it doesn't work because the more you try not to think about something the more you think about it and and and, and this this has been proven in a study in 1984 by Dr. Wagner. He told people not to think about a white bear. And the, the result is that they, people who are told not to think about a white bear ended up thinking more about a white bear. So the best strategy is not to repress yourself from, from focus too much about yourself, but to focus your attention somewhere else on what you actually want yeah. yeah yeah shift your attention to some somewhere else that is more productive so what we'll talk about is about being uh, being knowledgeable being passionate uh, and then focus on your not focus but be mindful about your posture posture mm -hmm. and gesture on stage mm -hmm. so and, you, so you can express confidence mm -hmm. and then um, be mindful about your tone your voice your pacing because it communicates uh, significance in your your public speaking and we talk about using stories analogies metaphor be direct in your yeah, visual ads be direct and then we talk about shifting focus from inward focus to outward focus that will help you not as not anxious on stage so we hope the content of the conversation back and forth has been helpful to you. We hope that you, at the very least you are able to get a couple of tips um, to help aid your next delivery of uh, whatever opportunity you have to speak in public or speak to a small group of people um, or just in conversations one-on-one -on -one to convey the confidence you have. We thank you for listening in and we hope that the contents have been beneficial and uh, we look forward to seeing you again.